Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my top starts of the week for week 15 of the 2023 fantasy football season. It's playoff time, so it is important to nail these start sit decisions. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and let's get right into it. We're gonna start at the quarterback position where I wanna talk about Justin Fields, QB of the Chicago Bears. I know last week was disappointing, but that was a tough matchup on the road against the Cleveland Browns. This week, it's a get-right opportunity for Justin Fields as he's at home against the Arizona Cardinals. Since he came back from injury, he has been pretty solid for fantasy. It's been a little up and down, uh, but he has been running quite a bit on the ground, which is Justin Fields' superpower. And in this matchup against the Arizona Cardinals, I'm expecting him to find success both through the air and on the ground. Um, he should be able to get the ball to his top weapon in, in DJ Moore. And the Arizona Cardinals are a defense that can definitely be exploited um, any way that Justin Fields really wants to. So fire up Justin Fields as a high-end quarterback one play with weak winning upside this week. All right, Justin Fields is probably someone that you have in the lineup. If he's on your team, he's in there most likely. I'm going to talk about a guy who you might need a little bit of confidence from someone else to put in the lineup. And that's going to be Baker Mayfield, quarterback of the Tampa Bay Bucks. He's had a little bit of a uh, career resurgence with the Bucks here. Um, last week against the Green Bay Packers, he was a quarterback two on the week with 29 points, according to Fantasy Pro Scoring. The week before that, he put up over 20 as well. He's hot. He's got the weapons with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Who, and Mike Evans has kind of been that guy all year. Last week, we saw Chris Godwin actually get involved and have a good game. So um, I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, um, they're both you know great to have as your top two receiving options. And in week 16... I expect the trend to continue with Baker Mayfield playing well for fantasy because they're taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is a very exploitable defense. He has the weapons, like I mentioned. And even out of the backfield, Rashad White, their running back, has been playing great for fantasy. And a lot of that is because he's so involved and so efficient in the passing game, which just helps Baker Mayfield that much more. So I love Baker Mayfield this week as kind of like a low quarterback one, high quarterback two play. And it looks like he has some upside, as we saw last week, so hopefully... He can put together back-to-back -to -back monster performances here. My final quarterback start of the week is going to be Geno Smith, quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. He's missed the last couple games due to injury, but before that, he was a quarterback one on the week against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not calling for him to be the quarterback one again, but it is a good matchup against the Tennessee Titans, and he has the weapons with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, uh, JSN, the rookie, um, and he's a better quarterback than Drew Locke. So, um, Geno Smith is not a must-start option, but if you don't have one of those top-tier guys and you're looking for someone, uh, or maybe your middling option kind of has a tough matchup, I think Geno Smith is someone that you can plug in there, assuming he's healthy and good to go, and I think he is a good bet to have a solid game, and um, we saw Kenneth Walker return from injury and look really good against that tough Philadelphia Eagles run defense last week, so it is possible that they might lean on the run a little bit because Tennessee has been getting beat on the ground as well. Uh, compared to you know how good they've been against the run in years past. But I still think Geno Smith is a solid play this week against the Tennessee Titans. We're going to move on to the running back position. And my first running back start of the week is James Cook of the Buffalo Bills. He's been pretty solid all year. Um, had his good games. Had a little bit of his disappearing acts as well. But since the bye week, the last two weeks, he's been the running back 3-2 and two with 22.6 and 35 I just turned Irish there. 35.1 points, uh, respectively, in half PPR. Now, the Chiefs and the Cowboys, those are pretty, you know, those are kind of decent defenses here. Now, in Week 16, he's taken on a Chargers defense that just gave up 63 points to the Raiders after they got goosed the week before. Yes, I played the Chargers defense in Dynasty over the Bears and lost in the playoffs because of that one move. Anyways, um... I'm attacking this Chargers defense, bro. Um, they're a good matchup. They've been a good matchup pretty much all year on the ground, but this team has given up. Like I said, they just gave up a huge performance to the Raiders. Zamir White had a good game for fantasy. The whole the whole team, the whole Raiders team, even the cheerleaders and the water boy had fantasy points. I'm not saying that, you know, the Bills are going to put up 63, but I would not be shocked at all. You know, if they put up 30 plus points, it's a blowout. James Cook is involved on the ground and through the air. He's a good bet to find the end zone here. He's a must start play. He's a top end running back one play who you cannot leave on the bench this week. We've seen the upside the last couple weeks. Now he gets the matchup at the very worst. Like 
you know, unless injury happens, he's going to be in the double digits, be a solid play. And he does have that crazy upside like we've seen the last couple of weeks and a couple other times this year. So fire him up. He's a must start. Next up, I'm bringing up B. John Robinson. I'm only putting him on this list because of last week. He has, listen, Arthur Smith, coach of the Falcons, very frustrating with the usage of some of their superstar players. But before last week and that disaster that Bijan had where he only had seven for 11 on the ground, one reception for three yards through the air and a fumble, he had negative 0.1 points in half PPR. Before that week, he had actually been pretty solid for fantasy lately, seeing a fair amount of volume. Last week, Tyler Algier was more involved um, against the Carolina Panthers. That's so disappointing because that's one of the best matchups for running backs in all of football. I'm calling for a bounce back here. Um, he's just too talented to bench him. Um, and I, I, you, I think you just have to erase last week from your mind. Unless you're in like an eight-team league or you're in a 10-team league where for whatever reason, like your team is just absolutely like psychotically dominant. I think Bijan Robinson is someone you still need to roll with in week 16 against the Colts. The Colts play in some high scoring games. Um, they give up fantasy points um, all around to the other team. So I think this is a good bounce back spot for Bijan. I like him as a mid running back one play and I expect him to get back on track here. Uh, fire him up with a fair amount of confidence, obviously with the way the Falcons run things, you're always a little bit nervous to play your stars, but I think Bijan should get more volume here, and I think he's going to uh, exploit this matchup in Week 16 and hopefully get you to a championship. And then my final running back start of the week is Aaron Jones. He is going up against that Carolina Panthers matchup I just talked about that Bijan was just not able to exploit last week, didn't get the volume. In his first game back from injury, Aaron Jones saw 17 touches, 13 for 53 on the ground, 4 for 16 through the air on 4 targets. Um, it didn't amount to a ton for fantasy. 8.9 points and half PPR was the running back 23 on the week. But um, I think this week against the Carolina Panthers, he's a good bet for double-digit points. Um, it's been a tough year just with injuries for Aaron Jones, but he's one of those players who can blow up at any time. The Carolina Panthers give it up on the ground, not through the air. Um, not because their pass defense is anything great, but teams are usually winning and are able to kind of run the ball and uh, wind down the clock at the end of the game against the Panthers. So I think Aaron Jones volume is very safe in this game. Obviously, you know, just with his hamstring and everything and his injuries he's been dealing with, um, he could re-aggravate it any given moment and be out for the game. But um, I think based on last week and the volume we saw, I think he's healthy. He's good to go. Um, and he's in a great spot to put up a big performance here in week 16 against the Panthers. So I like him as a running back to play with a ton of that Aaron Jones upside that we've seen um, this year and in years past. Now we're going to move on to wide receiver. I talked about Justin Fields as a start of the week, and I'm going to stack my first wide receiver start of the week with Fields. That's going to be DJ Moore, wide receiver of the Bears. Um, he's someone that you're probably playing all week or each week, um, but just coming off of a, t of a bad game, in a tough in a tough matchup against the Browns. I just want to give you the confidence to fire him up as a wide receiver one this week. Um, wide receivers in general are consistent. Um, Justin Fields is not the epitome of consistency to get his ball to his weapons. DJ Moore has also had to deal with uh, some backup quarterback play as well. Uh, but when Fields is healthy, DJ Moore is usually good. I know last week was rough, but he still saw eight targets, four for 52. You can do a lot worse than that. He's still very involved. Um, now he's taking on the Cardinals a much more exploitable matchup. And um, like I said, I like Justin Fields. I like the Bears offense in general. I would have made one of their running backs a start of the week, but you just don't know if it's going to be Foreman or Roshan Johnson or if Herbert is going to surprise. So um, I'm kind of targeting the passing game here. That's where um, I have a little more confidence in where the ball is going to go to. DJ Moore is a clear alpha um, wide receiver one target for Justin Fields. And you got to fire up DJ Moore as a wide receiver one this week. Um, especially because he does have crazy upside like we've seen a couple times this year. So you can't leave that on the bench because uh, if he has a big game and he goes off, you're going to regret it for years because you're going to miss your championship game. And we're not going to allow that here at the Fantasy Football Prodigy channel. I'm also stacking my next wide receiver starts uh, of the week with a quarterback start of the week. I said I like Baker Mayfield. He's got to get the ball to somebody. His top two weapons, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, are great plays this week. 
Mike Evans is obviously the superstar alpha wide receiver one that has been great for fantasy. One of the best draft picks in all of in all of football this year, in all of fantasy football. Um, I drafted him in one league. I wish I drafted him in more. Um, he's been great for fantasy. You got to fire him up again. It's a good matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, so Mike Evans, he's a locked in wide receiver one, just like he's been all week. Um, he'll have his games where he kind of disappears a little bit, but you just have to keep him in the lineup uh, just for those big boom game opportunities and his uh, touchdown opportunities. Um, he has 11 on the year. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets a 12 or maybe even 13 this week. And then Chris Godwin, um, you know, good player. Uh, it's been kind of a rough year, but the last couple weeks, he's seen 11 and 12 targets. Two weeks ago, it only turned into 5 for 53, 7.8 points and half PPR uh, was the wide receiver 37. And also the wide receiver wide receiver 37 the week before with 7.9 points, luckily got a rushing touchdown. But last week, we saw 12 targets again. Uh, so double digit targets each of the last two weeks. You love that opportunity. But it also, it actually turned into good production. 10 for 155 through the air, 20 and a half points. The wide receiver six on the week and half PPR. Look, this is not someone that you have to play. I don't want to chase points with Chris Godwin coming off of one good game, but it's two good games in a row of, of uh, volume, and I love the matchup. So I, if you don't have a locked-in person, like I have JSN in one league, like I sh like um, um I, I actually I was that was for a different video, but I'm starting JSN in one league most likely. Um. I'm if I had Chris Godwin, that is someone who you know I would in that situation love to have uh, Chris Godwin. Um, but he he's a decent play. Um, he is dealing with a bit of a knee injury. Um, he was limited on Wednesday. Um, didn't practice Thursday. Monitor the news as we get closer to game time. See if he practices. Um, if he does have a knee issue, if he's limited at all, um, just proceed with more caution. Just especially because Chris Godwin is not someone who is a guy that you need to force into your lineup. But there is opportunity there in this matchup. So I just wanted to touch on him as well. Mike Evans, though, is the main guy that I'm saying you got to get in your lineup. But Godwin could find success in this matchup if he's healthy and if the targets do come his way. My next wide receiver start of the week is Rashi Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs. He has definitely turned into their number one wide receiver. Um, since the bye week, 6.2, 20.7, 10.4, 14.7, 19.6 points at half PPR. He's taken on the Raiders, who in week 12, he was a top five wide receiver. Was He had 20.7 points in half PPR, was a wide receiver four on the week. Um, he's seen 10, 9, 10, 9 targets uh, the last four weeks. Um, he's just very involved. He's a safe play just with his involvement uh, with Patrick Mahomes. And he's taken on the Raiders, which I know their defense has been playing better lately. Um, but even against the Chargers, the Chargers were able to find some success through the air, which granted they were down by like 60 points. So obviously, you know, they might let up the gas a little bit, give up some underneath stuff. But, uh, I think Rashi Rice, you just got to stick with him. Um, and he is a low wide receiver one, high wide receiver two play, uh, very safe. And he does have upside as well. So I love him this week and week 16 against the Raiders. And then we're going to end off the wide receiver starts of the week with another stack. I stacked all three of my quarterback starts of the week with their wide receiver options. So for Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks, that's going to be DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and JSN. Out of those guys, DK Metcalf is the one you want to start the most. Um, he is the number one wide receiver there. They do spread the ball around a little bit, so it can be hard to predict um, you know, where the ball is going to go. You kind of would like to see it kind of consolidated more to two options, but with them drafting JSN, he's involved. He's a talented player. Um, so it makes it a little more murky, but I just want to highlight the opportunity that the Seahawks have in this matchup against an exploitable Tennessee Titans secondary. Um, Metcalf, you know, he should see um, five, six, seven, eight targets. Um, he's had some games with more, but the target volume is kind of sporadic, but he's very talented. He has big playability. He can get in the end zone. So he's someone that I'm starting as kind of like a higher end wide receiver two with upside. If you have a comparable option, um, I would probably go with Metcalf just because of the upside. Um, when, whenever I'm kind of deciding between two players, I think who am I more likely to regret sitting? Okay. DK Metcalf is someone where every time you leave him on the bench, you might lose your week because of it because he can put up big games 
We've seen it in the past. It hasn't happened that much this year, but it has happened, especially against the Cowboys, where he put up 34 and a half points. So um, uh, Metcalf is a great start this week. And then same thing, Tyler Lockett. I know it hasn't been great. Not a must-start guy, but um, I for whatever reason, I think this is a spot where he can kind of bounce back a little bit. We could see tech, um, kind of vintage Tyler Lockett with a big game here. Um, hopefully he gets in the end zone. That'll be huge. Last week it wasn't great for fantasy, but he did have nine targets. It just didn't amount to much. Just a little bit of a disconnect with Drew Locke, I guess. Uh, but the last three weeks, eight, six, and nine targets. He's still involved in the offense. Um, and I think right here is a great spot where um, he'll be able to bounce back. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you know, when, when you see a line like five for 51 or five for 47, six for 89, it doesn't really excite you that much. But if you just tack on a little bit more on top of that, or if he gets in the end zone, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, dang, like he had a good week. So Lockett, I think, is he's a safe bet for um, okay production, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him have one of his bigger games uh, probably since week 10. That's what I'm hoping for here. Um, so not a must start, but kind of like a wide receiver three with upside. Um, and then same thing with JSN. Um, I would start Lockett over JSN, but um, we've seen him be more involved um, getting, you know, his again, the target volume is so sporadic with these guys, but a, a few weeks ago, 11 targets, had a touchdown called back, I remember. Last week, only four targets, but that was his best performance um, in a while because he got in the end zone. So um, not a must start, kind of like Tyler Lockett, but someone who has big playability, very talented, great matchup. Um, wide receiver three, flex play. Um, depending on your options, you might have to play him. I'm likely going to be starting him in one league. So um, these guys all have opportunity. DK Metcalf is the one I want to highlight, kind of like the situation with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. But I also wanted to touch on the other options as well. So uh, these guys have some opportunity and hopefully they will be able to exploit it um, in week 16 against the Titans. We're moving on to tight end, and good golly, is David Njoku hot right now? I drafted him in my main league at the start of the year. Uh, wasn't doing much. Ended up dropping him probably around the bye week. But um, since week, since the bye week, since week seven, he's been great for fantasy, very involved, doing a lot with his targets. In the last two weeks, he has been the tight end two. Not a tight end two, the tight end two. Each of the last two weeks, 24.1, 21.4 in half PPR. Getting in the end zone, you know, being around 100 yards, 14 targets last week. Like, it's just crazy. Last week I made him, I think I made him a start of the week last week as well. I did. Um, and I even said, like, I don't expect him to repeat what he did the previous week. And he basically did. So I'm going to say the same thing. I don't expect 20 plus points, but... Maybe he'll shut me up again, dude. He's looked great. He's so involved. Joe Flacco is going to throw the ball a ton. They can't run the ball. So against the Houston Texans, um, it's a good matchup. They give up points to tight ends, bro. Um, no CJ Stroud. So the shootout potential is a little limited. But Case Keenum um, is a capable backup. He looked okay last week from what I hear. I didn't watch the game. But um, I guess he was able to kind of sustain a little bit of you know weapons there. So um, he's in a great spot. Unless you have like a Laporta or a Kelsey, uh, someone like that, Njoku is a must-start option in Week 16 against the Houston Texans. And then my next tight end start of the week is Hunter Henry of the Patriots. Now, I'm recording this on um, Friday, well, Thursday night, Friday morning. It's 3 a.m. on Friday, December 22nd, 2023. Um, Hunter Henry is dealing with a bit of an injury right now, so please monitor the news. Like, if he is like... If, if it comes out like he's not doing well, um, he'll be on a snap count or something. Like Maybe pivot to someone else. But this is all about the matchup and how well Hunter Henry has been playing lately. So week 16, the Patriots are taking on the Denver Broncos. That is a great matchup for tight ends. Um, Vance Joseph, their D coordinator, he has a thing with giving up points to tight ends. Um, so we're just exploiting the matchup here. And then the last couple weeks, um, Njoku has been the tight end two each of the last couple weeks. Hunter Henry has been the tight end three each of the last two weeks with 17 and a half and 16.1 points. A couple weeks ago, only three targets got in the end zone twice though. Um, so you, you would love to see more target volume, but the fact that he got in the end zone twice is huge and that, you know, he is in a weapon that could be turned to in that area of the field is massive. But what really gives me more confidence is last week 
seeing nine targets turned into seven for 66 and a touchdown. Um, I'm not saying he's going to get nine targets again. That was a season high, but Bailey Zappi, he seems to kind of have a thing for Hunter Henry lately. I'm rolling with it. And like, I, you know, I don't want to make these videos to tell you to start the Kelsey's and the Laporta's and you know, those um, top Trey McBride type options, try to give you someone a little more lower tier. Uh, maybe if you're desperate at the position. So Hunter Henry is someone where if he's healthy and good to go, I think you got to fire him up unless you have a locked in guy. Um, I like him as sort of like a lower tight end one, maybe a high tight end two, but, um, or in DraftKings as well. Someone you could put in that lineup. It's the Sunday night game. So maybe if you're doing the little captain showdown thing, you can put him in there. So um, Hunter Henry, he's a nice solid play this week. Uh, could disappear, but has the rare thing that a streaming tight end option often doesn't have, and that's upside with touchdown opportunity um, and with the matchup. So I love Hunter Henry this week. Uh, play him if you need someone to turn to at tight end. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Good luck in the fantasy playoffs, and I will see you guys next year. Ah, bye. Peace out.